Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Before we proceed, please hit that subscribe button, like and share with someone who's applying for the Commonwealth Shared Scholar. In this video, we're going to discuss the development impact statement. Commonwealth breaks down its questions into five parts. We have the development impact section, then we'll have the proposed study in the UK section, the personal set statement section, career plans section, and the voluntary and leadership experience section. Now, in responding to the development impact section, my personal opinion is that this is the most significant section, and therefore you need to handle it with the significance it deserves. If you have followed me right from the Shevening Scholarship, you're familiar with the kind of examples that I use. In the last Shevening Scholarship examples, we use Nelson Mandela and in this scholarship, I'm happy to introduce someone else, but before we go into that, we'll have the housekeeping role. First of all, this is not a passive video. Get your pen and paper or typing device and follow along. Remember, it's important. Hit the pauses. At the end of the day, we need to generate our draft. Then pause the video when requested to think through the discussion. And lastly, have a draft by the end of this video. So for example, today we'll use Wangari Mathai. I'll leave the link to this video down in the description box for copyright reasons. I won't be able to play it here. However, a summary of this is Wangari Mathai was the first African woman recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize and she received the prize in 2004 for her fight for environment and for the rights of women. She also launched the Green Belt Movement in 1977 to promote biodiversity while creating jobs for women and she is also the first woman to earn a doctorate in Central and East Africa. The reason I use public figures for examples is one it's easier to find information that i can use and be able to enrich the discussion and two it's important to understand that scholarship bodies are looking for the next world leaders the next change makers and looking at the examples of those who have gone before us and made the changes in the world is important so that you know the kind of expectations or the kind of person scholarships are looking for you don't need to be like Wangari Mathai at the moment. However, your essay needs to scream that you would probably be the next Wangari Mathai, the next Nelson Mandela. And so as you write, you have to have that at the back of your mind. So we'll jump straight right into the development impact question. The first uh, aspect is we're requested to select up to three sustainable development goals that relate to your future development impact, starting with the most relevant. So for this, one of the things you need to put into consideration is the theme. And when you're selecting a theme for yourself, and the theme is going to help you not only write your essays, but also stay consistent even as you get to the other stages of the application. Even when you write into the university, you would still need to be aligned to the particular theme. Now, how do we identify the theme? We do this by looking at our course of study. If you're going to study medicine or if you're going to study engineering, you're going to study any other course, but look at whatever you're going to study or you want to study and that would be your particular theme. You also want to look at your work experience. That's if you have work experience. Is it in health? Is it in hospitality? Is it in peace and justice? So it will be able to inform the kind of theme that you'll be looking to go for. You also want to see your areas of impact. By this, you want to look at the areas that you've contributed to, either through volunteering or you have and from that kind of impact but we'll be using this for examples so these need to be aligned with the theme that you're going for and lastly you have to look at the global issues including the sdgs before we continue pause this section and just quickly write out in bullet point what your course of study is what your work experience is your areas of impact from your work experience whether it's voluntary or not and the global issues that you feel like your field participates in. 
So in relation to Wangari Mathai, would say that her first SDG would be climate action. Remember, she initiated the Green Belt Movement. And second would be gender equality. Third would be life on land. With Wangari Mathai, actually she's known to be the defender of the earth. That's one of the things that they call her. So we jump straight into the questions. So the first question is provide a development impact statement in four parts explaining how your proposed study relates to a development issues at the global national and local level and for this one of the tips we need to consider is select a global problem related to a national problem then further related to a local or community area this could be in aspects of health for example related to you could start by stating what health crisis you've identified in the world and further break it down and state how it's further unveiled within your country for example i'm in uganda so i'll say how it's further unveiled in your country and then further related to your particular community or local area that you're in then use statistics i can't stress this enough quantify your problem statement tell us how many people are being impacted by this problem is it 95 percent or are you looking at the growth rate if the particular problem is not addressed at the moment what is the growth rate like and we'll look into an example on how to write this and for part b the question requires us to put into consideration how our proposed study relates to development issues connected to your chosen csc theme and wider sector now csc is commonwealth scholarship commission and so you'd have to look one at the csc themes now there are six csc themes these include science and technology for development strengthening health systems and capacity, promoting global prosperity, strengthening global peace, security and governance, strengthening resilience and response to crises, access, inclusion and opportunity. So if you do not have an idea of what these themes are, I'll leave the link down in the description box. So you need to see how your particular chosen course of study relates to one of these themes. Before we continue, I'd like you to put down some bullet points on how your proposed study relates to the development issue as explained and also how your proposed study is connected to CSC theme. Now most likely this is going to need some quantification or the use of statistics but for now we are developing a draft and you go back and search some statistics on that but just have your bullet points as we go along. So pause this video and write those down. Now, if Wangari Mathai was applying for an MSc Environment, Politics and Development at the University of London, SOAS, it's one of the universities and the courses that are already approved by Commonwealth. And so let's say she was applying for that. A statement would look like something like this. I put part A and part B just to separate the two, but you don't need to separate. It can be just one statement. So it, it reads World Bank data in 2020 shows that tropical forests cover about 15% of the world's land surface. However, approximately 13 million hectares of trees are degraded and deforested a year resulting into carbon dioxide emissions. These emissions are the second largest source of greenhouse gases that cause global warming. In Kenya, African Development Bank reports that between 1980 and 2000, Kenya lost nearly 50% of its forest covered due to intensive logging, chocolate production, and large-scale clearance of wooded areas for tea plantations, leaving local communities more susceptible to climate change, including droughts and floods. As an environmental activist, I discovered that due to the absence of enforceable environmental policies, there is a 2% annual deforestation increase in Kenya, and if not curbed, this will result into long-term global threats of climate change. This goes for the need to strengthen resilience and ability to respond to such crises. Therefore, I set up the Green Belt Movement to engage grassroots communities to conserve and restore the environment. The MSC Environment, Politics and Development provides the opportunity to learn environmental policy creation that enables sustainable economic development and how Kenyan communities can buffer themselves against 
the worst effects of climate change. Quite a mouthful, but we'll break it down a bit. If you recall, part A required us to select a global problem statement related to a national problem statement and then further related to a local community area. So let's see how we did with that. So we state that the World Bank shows that tropical forests cover 15% of the world and however approximately 13 million hectares of trees are degraded and deforested a year resulting into carbon dioxide emissions. So that is the global perspective. Then we further break it down into the national perspective which is these emissions are second largest source of greenhouse gases that cause global warming. Then secondly we say in Kenya African Development Bank reports that between 1980 and 2000 Kenya lost 50% of its its forest cover due to we mentioned some problems there that covers the aspect of a global problem related to a national problem and further a local community problem so with the local community area we'll see this unveil mini in the example and in regard to the statistics those were also seen in the first part then for part B we were to consider one of the CSC themes and the theme that had been chosen by Wangari Math size essay is strengthening resilience and responses to crisis and this is where exactly the particular course falls so to assess if we were able to cover this we'll see that as an environment activist i discovered that due to the absence of enforceable environmental policies there's a two percent annual deforestation increase in kenya and if not curbed this will result into long-term global threats of climate change global threats of climate change falls under strengthening resilience and response to crises such as climate change. So this could be an example of how you can write out your particular essay. And so we'll continue. We'll look at the second part of the question is how do you intend to apply your new skills and qualifications when you return home? So tips to consider is check the course content and pick out the skills that you will attain. While you check out the course content from a particular university, please do not copy and paste the information. Rather, paraphrase it in simple terms that that you can be able to use or explain. You'll be held for plagiarism if you copy paste and your application will be rejected. Then be specific on how you want to use these particular skills that you're going to attain. So don't just say you're going to acquire a skill set in let's say research. Tell us how you're going to use that particular skill set in research. The how aspect is very important while you are writing out this question. So and lastly you can build on an already existing project that you're already working on or state something new so if it is research you could talk about an already existing research project or you could talk about a research that you would be able to do once you've acquired this particular skill before we continue we're going to put down some bullet points and this is going to require that you pause and go check out your particular course or program that you're going to do and look at the course content then write down a few bullet points of some of the skills that you think you're going to pick up from there and follow along as we go through this particular example you can pause so we'll look at an example again of Wangari Mathai. She was applying for an MSc Environment, Politics and Development. This is what she would write. Using the knowledge attained on the role environmental movements play in sustainable development, I will introduce community-based tree planting to ensure poverty reduction and environmental conservation. The course also teaches how the the course also teaches how the environment intersects with global poverty, wealth, and questions of inequality. Therefore, with this skill set, I intend to improve women's livelihoods by empowering them to lead the restoration of degraded ecosystems. I will also use my acquired knowledge on policy generation to influence environmental policies by representing the Tetu constituency in Kenya's parliament, as well as serving the office of the Minister for Environment and Natural Resources. Note how specific this particular example is. You've stated the skill set and even as you state how you're going to use this particular skill set, you have been as specific as it can get. The kind of people it's going to impact, for example women's livelihood, or the kind of policies that you're going to work on, the kind of offices that you'll be in. So be specific with how you're going to use your particular skill set. 
We'll move on to the next question. We're required to state what you expect will change in development terms following your studies, uh, including the want us to break it down, the outcomes that you aim to achieve. And with this, our tips to consider is continue to be consistent with your theme and be smart about the outcomes. So if you chose environment, this is not the time to talk about hospitality. If you chose peace and justice, this is not the time to talk about environment. So be consistent and be smart about it. Being smart is be specific, measurable, it has to be attainable, it has to be realistic and time bound. You also have to include the time frame for their implementation. Tips to consider is have short, medium and long term goals while you're writing out this part. And lastly, we are required to state who the beneficiaries will be from the impact of the change that we are set out to do. So here you need to be specific on who is going to be your target group. Now, before we continue once again, please hit the pause button so that you can be able to jot down what outcomes you expect to attain, your short, medium, and long-term goals, and what is your target group. Preferably do this before we go into the example so that you can be able to have a better insight. An example we'll look at again still being consistent with our theme for environment and climate change crisis we'll have a look at this example Wangari Mathai Wood writes currently through the green belt movement I have led the planting of 1 million trees per year and on my return from my masters I will set to achieve planting of 3 million trees per year through community based tree planting in the midterm I intend to improve women's livelihood by setting up a unique bamboo community-based craft center to generate sustainable income for smallholder farmers and their households through the development of bamboo as a sustainable source of fuel wood, promoting the use of energy-saving cook stoves and creating market opportunities for bamboo products. This will ultimately contribute to poverty reduction, saving of natural forests, reducing landscape degradation and mitigation of climate change in Kenya. In the long run, as a member of parliament and serving in the office of the Minister of Environment and Natural Resources, I will contribute to the formulation of public policies such as the National Forest Policy and influence the setting of forestry-related nationally determined contribution targets of the country. Now, let's look at this. We'll go back to the breakdowns that were expected from us. The outcomes that you aim to achieve, we need to look out for that. The time frame for their implementation and who's the beneficiary for this. And we're supposed to write this in 250 words as you see we uh, have about 164 words so for part a i'll just go back up it the outcomes that you intend to achieve Okay, so our outcomes, we're able to see that she looks to plant 3 million trees. She also looks to target women's livelihoods by setting up a unique bamboo community-based craft center. And then also the other thing that she looks at doing is uh, formulate public policies. But she has been as specific, or at least the example has been as specific as possible on the target group, the tree planting, and the policies. One thing that I could change from this as I read through would be maybe to also be a bit more specific on the number of women she's looking to target at the beginning. Yeah, so like I said, I wrote this essay, but you know as you continue to read your essays, you can see some improvements that can be made. So the improvement I would make is quantify the number of women that I would be looking to impact or that I think comes in the next essay. All right, so let's go on. If you have any question about this, just leave it down in the comment section. I always respond to the comments and provide guide any further guidance from the video. So lastly, Commonwealth requires that we provide a statement on how the impact of our work could best be measured. And tips to consider would be develop key performance indicators for the work you stated you will do and how often your progress will be tracked. It's important to have this so that you can be able to track your own performance and be able to curb anything that is causing you not to meet your targets. So there will be a follow-up on some of the things that you've said that you're going to do and therefore an assessment of your key performance indicators would be very important. Once again this is a good time for you to pause and jot down your bullet points and the bullet points should cover what your key performance indicators are going to be like and how you're going to keep track of these.
So for example, one could write, through the community-based tree planting, Green Belt Movement commits to reduce or avoid greenhouse gases by 12 metric tons in Mao ecosystem by 2023. The Bamboo Community Best Craft Center will improve women's livelihood by 50% in 2025. To review the progress, I will create a team of community champions that will generate monthly reports on the progress and challenges of the selected implementation activities. I will also use economic indicators to monitor the improvement of women's livelihood. In regard to policy creation, a zero draft of national forest policy must be in place by 2025 and implemented by 2026. So you are specific. So this is how you can be very specific in your particular, let's see. Now, just to go back a few slides back, to come back to women's livelihood, again, I think I would still include the number of women that I'm looking looking to target. So I thought maybe I'd covered it in the previous essay, but no, in the, I mean the next in question four, but that doesn't cover it. Be as specific as possible on women's livelihood. So generally just quantify as much as you can quantify your essays. Yeah. And so that is how to answer question four as well. That brings us to the end of question four of the development impact essay. If you have any questions, again, leave them down in the comment section. Once again, I'd like to pay tribute to Wangari Mathai. I think she really did a great job in contributing to changing the world to be a better place and to pay tribute to her i'll leave us with a quote she says finally i was able to see that if i had a contribution i wanted to make i must do it despite what others say that i was okay the way i was that i was all right to be strong wangari mathai thank you very much see you on the next question that will be proposed study in the uk until next time remember it might be hard but nothing is ever impossible thank you wangari mathai rest in peace and just like that we've discussed the development impact statement quite a heavy statement but remember nothing is ever impossible until next time we'll be discussing the proposed study in the uk statement